simply said that when we turn on the news and we hear about mass shootings, school killings, and now shul killings, it's mind-numbing that this is somewhat routine for us to hear and to experience. And it's almost like, yeah, standard. This is something that's normal, that's routine for the crazy world that we live in. And it's sin. So for today's talk, I want to first uh, present a question for this class. How can we honor people, right? So specifically these victims, but in general, how can we honor people to let them know that things that they've experienced, that things that they've suffered, um, don't necessarily go in vain. What are some ideas? What are we thinking? How can we honor somebody? Freddie. Memorial. We can memorialize them. Okay, Noah. We can like um, we can publicize what the, how they like how they died. Like we can publicize like what they stood for before they died. We can publicize what they stood for. Good. Anybody else have thoughts? Ready for two? Um, you can. That you could use the event to try to prevent this type of event by happening again. Love that thought. Jacob? You should, like, go to the, um, the victim's family and, like, help them out with what they We can physically help the victim's family. Okay, Sam? Last thought? Show love and support. We can show love and support. So, uh, a few, quite some time ago, I lost my grandmother, and I'm not comparing the tragedy that transpired on Shabbat to me losing my grandmother, but I want to just take away something. I made a commitment to myself that I didn't want my grandmother's passing to go in vain, to go unnoticed for me in my life, and I decided that I was going to take on upon myself something new that I didn't really do before to honor her and to make sure that her something about her always was going to stay with me for the rest of my life. There was a very vivid moment that I experienced with her in my lifetime. My mother lived on Avenue J and East Fifth. My grandmother lived on Ocean Park Way and Avenue M. Um, there was one Friday night that I walked her home. She was really old. She was well into her 80s. And um, I said, Grandma, I'm going to walk you home. Great. I started walking her home. And uh, we get to Ocean Park Way and J, and she's gassed. She's out of breath. She can't move. I'm like, Grandma, I'll, I'll help you. I'll she goes, no, I'm going to do it myself. She sat on that, park, uh, on that bench on Ocean Parkway. She waited for a little bit. She got back up, and we did it again. We continued going on that pattern eight more times. From Avenue J to Avenue M, every single time she got gassed, she sat down, she did her thing, and it was her motivation that led her to say, I need to do this for myself because if I'm not capable of walking to my own home on my own two feet, what's the point of living anymore? That was her mentality. So I took it upon myself that from here on out, every single time I feel like I can't do something um, and it's so much easier to rely on the support of other people, I'm going to second guess it. And I'm going to do everything in my capacity to honor my grandmother and to uh, try my hardest to do things on my own uh, just like she would have done. So I want to have today's talk um, as an opportunity to uh, as an opportunity to um, share an idea about how we can do something different, how we can add a new facet to our own lives to honor and to um, really make sure that the tragedy that, that transpired over Shabbat doesn't go in vain. So first of all. It doesn't make sense, right? It's not fair. And stuff like this, really by definition, can never be fair or make sense, and I'll explain why. Because any attempts to use logic to an irrational decision, to, an, to an, an inconceivable type of action, the myth is never going to add up. But let's just, for the sake of process, let's just try to get into the head of this crazy, a ridiculous, mean individual who decided to commit this heinous crime, okay? 
he decided that there was some type of person, there was a group of people that was infringing on his opportunity to live in the world in a happy way, in a safe way. Let's just go with the logic. So he decided that in order for him to enjoy his life, he needed to do something to either end his life or not have the freedoms to live in it because he was committing a crime that would obviously put him in prison, which he's now going to be, thank God. So you understand how any attempts for us to rationalize something that is illogical, incomprehensible, uh, it's just never going to work. So I want to pivot away from trying to justify something that is clearly something that will be difficult for us to do. And I want to focus on something that I feel definitely played a role in what led to him to commit these actions. And perhaps it's something that we can take upon ourselves to truly honor and memorialize these victims who had to suffer something that they should not have, have suffered. When people have discussions, okay, there are two types of people. Person number one is somebody who is entertaining a two-way conversation and they're having a dialogue, right? I talk, you talk, I talk, you talk. And then there's person number two. I'm not necessarily entertaining um, the conversation the right way, right? I'm having more of a monologue. I'm willing to tolerate what it is that you're going to tell me. And it's like I'm really a part of the conversation because there's two of us in the room. But let's be real. I have zero care and consideration for what it is that you're saying. I'm just merely waiting for you to stop spewing the nonsense that I feel you're trying to share with me. And I'm waiting for my time to shine and to share my true brilliance and my words of wisdom that I've already prepared from before you even opened your mouth to me. It's very difficult to live in a world with that type of person. Because really, how can real change take place if we're not willing to even entertain a conversation and have a dialogue about anything? Right? So now what's happening in the news right now? Every opportunist, every politician is getting up and they're saying, aha, you see? I know why this happened. It's because mental health. No, it's because gun control. No, it's because, it's because, it's because. And nobody wants to entertain a dialogue and nobody is willing to say, what are your thoughts? And then let me listen to those thoughts, influence my thoughts, and then come back to you and we can actually engage in meaningful conversation. No, that's not what we do. What we do is like I said before, I'm willing to tolerate your time that you're wasting of mine. And when you're done speaking, that's when I'll share my glorious words of wisdom. And we do this all the time. It doesn't have to be in the context of tragedy and mass shootings. Right? Teacher gets up and she starts to prepare her words about what it is that you're going to learn about. And instead of listening to those words and allowing for those words to now influence how you're going to respond back, you've already made a decision. This is nonsense. What on earth are we learning about right now? This is not for me. I already knew it ahead of time, and I'm just waiting for you to shut your mouth